scale. But let's maybe move venue. Oh, let's just wrap up the V scale real quick. Okay, do it. And all ra- all rating scales, okay? All ratings, whether V ratings, French grades, uh, YDS grades, you name it. They are simply the excrement of the climbing experience. <laughs> you look at it this way. <laughs> Say, you know, you go out and you have a great bouldering session with your friends mm-hmm. and it's in this beautiful area, you know, maybe out in, in, in the Fontainebleau forest. It's like this fairy tale forest or, or you're up on the side of some incredible granite dome in, in the Sierras or something like that. And you're having the best time ever, ever with your friends. You're moving great. You're moving fluidly. You feel like a, like a climbing machine and you're sending problem after problem. And then it's like if you went to a fine restaurant for a meal and the waiter was polite, the food was great, the ambience was incredible, your date was super engaging and witty and everything like that. And then after you've eaten that meal, what comes out the next day? A turd. Okay? So after you've, after you've taken in all the nourishment that the climbing experience has to give you, the camaraderie, the kinesthetic joy, the intermingling with nature and, and, and the, the, the self-challenge and everything. What pops out at the end? A grade. A single number to describe all that? That's like weighing your turd the next day after going to a Michelin star rated restaurant and going like, whoa, hey, I just fired a T8. That was great. Oh, man. Okay, so now can we go on and start talking about climbing again? Because, I mean, so here I am. I'm, I, I'm 1,600 feet up the Mordwand. The Norwegians had just knocked off the Verglas off the step. The lower, lower parts of the north face of the Eiger are fairly low angle. You have a lot of scrambling. You're not roped up. You're, you're going up uh, lower angle snow fields and through some scree. And then, then there's a, a whole number of little vertical steps you got to get through. But usually you can find a pretty easy way through. Well, the face was totally iced up that year. And from town, it looked like it was going to be easy going because there's so many options. All these ice ribbons coming down the face. It's like, oh, man, we're going to run up this thing. It's going to be great. Well, it turned out that ice was about an inch or two thick with half an inch of air behind it, everywhere, not bonded to the face at all. So the Norwegians just climbed through the step, but the ice had shattered behind them, and we had to find another way because there wasn't enough to climb there. I said, well, man, I'm just going to traverse this ledge around this corner. And the ledge just had this uh, ridge of snow right on the outside edge of the ledge where the snow had, had fallen off the face above it and settled on the outside edge of this ledge. And I'm walking along that, and it finally gets steep enough that I'm kind of like honolding, but facing the rock, you know. And I just go like, hmm. So I get down on my hands and knees. I start crawling around this little steep bulge. I think, okay, it doesn't look steep around the corner. I'll just stand up there and then continue over to the easy ground around the corner. I get around the corner. I stand up. And then for some reason, the snow ridge that I'm traversing just falls away. In front of me, I just go like, oh, crap. And I've I've destroyed it behind me by crawling along it. And I'm standing on top of like this giant jack-o'-lantern size lump of snow. So terrified that if I shift my weight from one foot to the other, it's going to crumble too. I'm going to fall down like this 15-foot cliff and then land on a 50-degree snow slope that goes for about 50 feet. Got that much time to self-arrest. And then you're off the face for good. (laughs) <laughs> oh, man, I'm freaking out because I can't climb forward. I can't climb back. I don't dare shift my weight from one foot to the other. I'm screaming to my partner, Tom, man, go, got to get above me and drop, drop me a rope. And he's like, you know, he's trying to find a way up. You know? <laughs> I don't know how long I was there freaking out. I was going like, okay, I got to throw my pack off. It weighs too much. But I have a sling around my shoulder, so I can't get the pack off. And, uh, you know, it's like I hook my tools into the Vare glass just to take that weight off of me and then the the bare glass crumbles and the tools go dangling off their leashes on my wrists. And I was going, now I don't have any even this little security of having a tool hooked in this bare glass. And I am I am starting to panic so bad. And then I go like, okay, I read about this once. I start spitting on my wool gloves and holding them against the rock. I freeze my gloves 
to the rock and wait for my partner to get up there. And oh, hang on, were we talking about ratings? Should we go back to that? <laughs> So if you had, I'm sorry. To give that, I, I got I got I got off on a tangent and if, started talking about climbing. I mean, so dang. if you had to give that a V rating, what would you that move? No, <laughs> no, no, that to. that would have gotten a T rating for sure because I was shitting myself right. big time. <laughs> so who'd you?